Today we talk to Eleven, an NFT artist with over $20,000 in sales across platforms like Foundation and Maker's Place. We'll talk about the inspiration behind her very iconic and recognizable style and give advice to those looking to enter the crypto art community. Today, we're interviewing Eleven. She's an NFT artist known for creating very iconic artwork using vibrant colors and gradients. The Gradient Queen. How are you doing today, Eleven? (laughs) I'm doing fine. And you? I'm doing excellent. I was really excited for this. This is our first kind of NFT specific stream that I'm doing and the first NFT specific interview that's going to be going up on YouTube. I have a bunch of questions for you. If you're ready to answer them. The first one I always ask is, when did you start? Where did you start? And why did you start? So basically, I started with designing like six years ago. I used to be in the esports industry, in the German esports industry. I also used to um, play Call of Duty. How did I get into design? Basically, back then, there was this huge hype about gameplays, and my team wanted to make a YouTube channel. So I decided to make some graphics for them. And this is how I got into designing, basically. Two years later, I noticed that I'm not really satisfied with esports. So I switched into like branding, logo design, motion design, apparel. I did a lot of different stuff. Then one year later, I started to develop my own art style, like with gradients. And I also started to make digital art, but I was too scared to actually post it on Twitter since Last year in, I guess, September, I started to just post my digital art and I also started to switch to the art community. Um, Yeah, (laughs) this is how I started, basically. Yeah, so that's kind of what I know about you as well as you started in esports and kind of transitioned your way into more of the art scene, something that I feel like you're a little bit more passionate about. So I had a question regarding that and Mm -hmm. this general leap that not only you, but I think a lot of people had to take coming from different industries. So as an esports designer, moving into abstract art, how did you find yourself making your way into the community? And was there any challenges that faced you when you started transitioning in? Um, So I found out about the art community or like the NFT community through Etienne. Mm -hmm. Basically, a lot of people did that. Um, I just saw that he made a lot of money (laughs) on the timeline and I was like, wait, what? Uh, when I grew up, <laughs> a lot of people told me artists are not like able to make a living out of their art. So it was like mind blowing to me that he was able to make a lot of money, but also with digital art. I tried to research about the community and yeah, I fell in love with it because it's somehow revolutionary to be able to make a living out of art. Yeah, the challenges, I guess, when it comes to NFT, it's really hard to understand the NFT industry at first. I remember when I minted my first artwork, I didn't know that I had to pay a gas fee. And afterwards, when you um, sell your artwork and you want to actually claim um, the crypto, you have to pay a fee again. So I didn't have a lot of money back then. Also, a lot of platforms, you have to apply for them. So mm-hmm. I did get into Super Rare, for example, but eventually I get into Maker's Place. So that was another challenge of mine. Also, I wasn't really used to network or like interact with other people. I was just always in the design community in my own friend group. And through the art community or the, like the NFT community, I was able to learn how to network with people, interact with people, and um, yeah, being able to establish a brand, some uh, kind of. And how did I work with these challenges? Well, I researched, of course. Shout out to Lupify, I would say. Mm-hmm. If you want to get into NFTs, I would say he makes a lot of nice Twitter posts on, and he also has a website for that. If you want to join a platform, for example, like Super Rare, and you don't get in, then don't get discouraged because you can interact with other NFT artists in the meantime, basically. And it takes a lot of time. So I was patient. Um, Yeah. I I think that's a great answer. And that's something that a lot of people, I think coming into the NFT industry, maybe don't recognize at first is that it's not just you list something and you get free money. NFTs are kind Mm -hmm. of unique in that 
you can actually lose money through NFTs through those fees. Like if you don't mm. make sales and like, it's not like graphic design. The only way you lose is if you don't get work. But NFTs, if you don't, you have to play things smart, mm. right? Otherwise you'll end up losing a lot of your time and money at the same time. And that just, nobody wants that to happen, right? Mm. You definitely have to be really smart. And like you said, you have to build your own brand. So it's not like you're working for people. You're kind of working for yourself. You're creating your own business. And a lot of people need to get used mm. to the differences between those things. So um, that actually leads into the next question, which I wasn't planning for it to, but um, <laughs> going into that. So I wanted to hear your thoughts on the differences and similarities between doing design work for clients and creating NFTs that are leaned towards getting purchases from investors and which one you prefer out of those two. So I think the main cause of these differences is basically that design is different from art. Like you can say design is a form of art, but I would say design is art. I would say maybe design is art with the aspect of problem solving maybe. So the difference is that if you do client work, you have to work with your client's preferences. Whereas with NFTs, you can do actually what you want and just mint the artwork. So this is the main difference that, you, that you're like more free. And also designing is a sort of service. I wouldn't say NFTs are like a design service or like an art service. You do these things for yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. um, also the pay. The pay is way 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 different i see a lot of designers in the community that <laughs> underpay or underjudge themselves maybe like five dollars per header and which is like raise your prices but you know the pay is definitely different um similarities as of right now i don't see any similarities it, it depends you can actually do nft commissions and i would say this is like something where these type of industries can be similar mm -hmm. like someone asked me to make an nft for them and he in crypto yeah maybe that's a similarity yeah i mean it it kind of makes sense like and i think the the main difference like you had mentioned is the freedom you have with creating your own artwork right so like design work i know mm -hmm. like for me i was really comfortable with branding because i love working with people and like working through problems and coming up with solutions together and i know a lot of people designers especially get uncomfortable with this idea of like there's no brief you have a completely empty canvas and you just make mm. whatever you want whatever like you feel comfortable making um so that's why i was curious i'm assuming if you hadn't said it already that's kind of what you lean more towards is the freedom to create your own stuff right mm, yeah i've always been into art but i got demotivated along the way because especially in germany people especially teachers told me don't study art for example you won't get a lot mm. of money with it and i'm that kind of person that wants to i mean money everything but i want to be able to make a living being able to satisfy my basic needs. And if someone tells me I won't be able to make a living with it, then I would just stop it. So I prefer NFTs, yeah. More money, also more freedom for yeah. me. Yeah, and, and it's, it's more money. It's like people realizing how much their work is actually valued at. Because I think you kind of mentioned that earlier is people in the design mm -hmm. community and esports especially don't pay enough. And when they transition to NFTs, it's like, wait, I can actually make this much money doing like, you know, what I love to do, right? And it's kind of a weird jump. Like people, I, th mm. I see underpricing themselves in NFTs as well because you just can't get that through their head that it's even possible to make that much money, you know? Yeah, that's actually something we did also. Like mm -hmm. I told you, let's put the reserve price to whatever. We just mm -hmm. wait for someone to bid on it. Like you have to be confident and just be patient. Yeah, confidence is huge. So I, I guess moving into the next question then, talking about like these things that we love about the FT community, what would you say is your favorite part about the community and what are you looking forward to seeing more of? So my favorite part of this community is, it's similar to the art community in general. The community is very welcoming and supportive. It's like the community is so diverse and everyone is just accepting the way you are or like the way you do you stuff whereas the d design community i mean i love the community but i must say 
it's a much more toxic environment in the design community. It feels like a competition, not like, okay, I will support others, they support me. It's more like, I want to join this team, and if someone else joins this team, then I hate them or something like this. <laughs> um, and <laughs> basically, I appreciate the community a lot because... You are able to s surround yourself with positivity and it's also very good for your creative process. What I'm looking forward to is basically artists turning into collectors because there are collectors out there that might not have this, uh, let's say, artistic knowledge and just buy anything. Mm -hmm. There are artists out there, like they make one sale and then they reinvest that into other artists. And this is something I look forward to. Um, artists supporting other artists and I've already seen that and I think in the future it will happen way more yeah I think so too this community is so early on and I totally agree with you that my favorite part is the positivity artists supporting other artists I never really thought about it until you had mentioned it but it, it does seem like the design community has like a hostility towards it because we're not just making art hoping that people buy it. We're like trying to get jobs at companies. And when someone gets a job, that mm. means that job is taken out of the market. Like nobody else can get hired in that position. Mm. Like it's, it's taken up, seats taken, you know? So because of that, it seems like there's a lot of issues with people. Everyone wants to make their way to the top. Uh, in NFTs, it, it seems a little bit different, right? Everyone's just trying to do their own thing, make a mm. name for themselves, right? Which is, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I never really thought about that, that uh, comparison between the two. So I appreciate that. <laughs> but if you're ready, if you have uh, any other comments, otherwise, I wanted to ask you a kind of a fun question. But if you could invest in any NFT artist or artists, if there's more than one, who would you choose and why? <clears throat> <laughs> you can ask me that <laughs> because <laughs> I follow a lot of cr creative artists and I love mm -hmm. basically every one of my followers mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. I just buy anything I like. I don't have a, like, a specific artist, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, when I think about it, when I want to buy something, I'm also look for um, artists that don't get a lot of support. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't just buy an NFT from Puck or Peg whatever yeah, he's called, yeah, yeah. I would mostly uh, support smaller artists. Um, this is something I mostly look for, but I don't have a specific NFT artist, to be honest. I appreciate that response. I was, uh, <laughs> so maybe, maybe then, just to put you on the spot, let's say that morals are completely, <laughs> like, the, the only goal is, like, I am buying this person's NFT knowing that it's going to increase in value because I, basically the reason why i wanted to ask you that is so we can maybe talk about why mm. an investor would pick a person you know like what quality should people be mm. looking for when they're you know creating work that they want others to invest in right well if i was this kind of person then i mm -hmm. would most likely buy a beeple or like a peg or like a Fabusha's NFT because they're already basically known and the chance of having these NFTs resold then mm -hmm. the chance is pretty yeah. high. The demand is really high for all of them. My own money out of it. I think that's fair. I think and maybe the the comparisons between those three is that their brands are very established, right? So you were saying way early on that something mm artists are kind of getting used to in this community that they haven't done before is building their own business and these people all have experience doing that right like they're building their brand right now but i thought i would just put you on the hot seat i know you're a very kind person and it's <laughs> difficult for you to pick out a specific artist but just so the world can know right <laughs> but um you chose violence <laughs> <laughs> i chose violence yeah, I mean, I was genuinely curious, but I would I would invest in all those people too, especially people. I was really hoping I could get the uh, everyday the five thousand where he gave out the dollar um, mm -hmm. dollar versions. I was really hoping to get one of those. I entered in it. I was so excited, but 
you know, we can't win them all. So I would love to just own <laughs> one of his pieces just to own. Because I, I know exactly what you're saying with like, I, I'm sure you invest in work not to invest it for profit, but because you really enjoy it. I really wanted to get that physical mm. people like display. That's the only thing I was like, I want that, you know, just to collect. So I, I totally understand that. So moving on. I wanted to talk a little bit more on advice. In my most recent YouTube video that I posted uh, two weeks ago, I think, you gave a little bit of advice talking about the importance of artists staying true to themselves. So <clears throat> now that we're live and we have more time to talk about it, I just wanted to ask you to explain a little bit more about that concept of staying true to yourself and maybe how it applies to your own career. So basically, I think this advice is underrated in my opinion a lot of people mm -hmm. just give advices on how to prevent art block or like whatever but i don't see a lot of people saying stay confident in your work do what you want don't get demotivated by sales or like um likes general support um and i think when it comes to art art is like a reflection of your own soul so basically what i truly appreciate if someone puts his heart into his artwork um and if you think about it if every single person in this community is unique and makes the art the way they want to do then i feel like this is perfect like when i think about it when i heard about nfts actually i feared that there might be people that just make it for the money mm. and i and i already saw that like a collector was saying, okay, tweak your work to get some sales. But I feel like this speaks against the definition of art. And if you, as an artist, create work in order to, to sell it, I feel like you lose your identity of an artist. I feel like it is way more important to establish a brand. Like, as you said, you have people or like Puck, they have like, you know, it's their art and it's way more the value is way more um, higher than someone who does like who like does mainstream art. Also, there are collectors out there that are truly interested in your art and the meaning, and also in you as a person. I had a lot of collectors DMing me and saying, "Like, can you tell me something about your backstory or like the the meaning of your artwork?" Um, they there are collectors out there that really treasure what you do or like why you do it. So I feel like it is really important to stay true to yourself and um, be confident in what you're doing. And for me and myself, why, why am I saying this? Basically, I'm really interested in psychology. Hmm. And there's this theory that what I learned in school, that people have certain opinions or like morals. And there are these type of people that have these certain morals because they want to like get accepted by other people. There are these people that want to like stand out. And I'm this type of type of person that wants to rather stand out than just following yeah, following the stream or like being mainstream. And that's why I actually gave this advice because mm -hmm. when I was working on my brand identity, I was like if you saw a brand identity project actually, one of my values is um uniqueness. And because I I treasure that a lot. And I always strive to be as unique as I can. That's why I have this like art style or like this gradient vibrant stuff since like three years already. Because I feel comfortable with it and it's my style. A lot of people tell me, well, if I look at your artwork, I can tell it's it was made by you. And this is like something, it's also beautiful because mm -hmm. um, imagine someday you will, you will probably die. Probably. And artists like a medium of say, <laughs> of like, yeah, you put like a piece of yourself into your artwork. And if mm -hmm. you die, you, you will continue to live on through your art. This is what I think is really beautiful. This is why I appreciate it if someone is unique and it's just confident in what they're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really <laughs> glad I asked you that because I could definitely see the passion in that answer. <laughs> you know, the way you explained it. And I think it's really easy to get lost in your initial advice is like, just stay true to yourself. And that's kind of a phrase you hear being thrown mm. around. Like a lot of people just kind of say it, but 
I'm glad that we got to hear kind of what that actually means to you and talk a little bit more about being true to, uh, true to yourself, not only yourself as an artist, but like how it impacts the community. Cause you had mentioned like a lot of people will just jump into it for the money, but the artists that can stay true to themselves, the community benefits from that, right? Cause it's, everything's more honest. It just feels like an honest community, right? The culture is honest. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's huge. It's, it, that's the artist mentality too, staying true to yourself. So I appreciate that. And it, it shows me that you're kind of meant to do this, which is uh, really awesome. Let's take it a step back. So you've, you've been doing this for a long time, like you said, and you've kind of developed your style, you've developed your work. But if you could go all the way back to the start of your NFT career, what would you do differently? When I started to get in the, in the NFT community, I didn't really have my very own brand identity. So something that I would like to do differently is like establishing a brand beforehand. There was this time I thought to myself, maybe I don't need a brand ID because why should I need that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but my brand identity helped me to actually find out who I am and like um, what my work is about. So I wish to, I would have established this brand way earlier mm -hmm. but like when i joined the nft community and then establish it like way 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 earlier also i could have done better research of course mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because i didn't have a lot of money back then and i didn't know that you had to pay a lot of gas fees so mm -hmm. i had to wait like two months or something to mint yeah. my first artwork yeah this is something i would have done differently these yeah. two aspects i guess yeah that's i think Pretty much also the similar advice that Etienne gave was that when he started, he kind of did that. Like he researched, he figured out, like before he even started listing pieces, he was kind of just getting a feel for the environment, meeting people. That was something that I wish I did too. And maybe to add to your point, mm. like when it comes to creating a brand, I didn't realize the difference it makes to just have a brand and go take that brand into the NFT community versus creating a brand inside the NFT community. Because there's, I've seen a lot of people that have big brands mm. and they're kind of well established and they just jump into the NFT scene thinking like, well, I, my brand's already made, like I should get sales, right? But if you don't kind of integrate your brand into mm. the community, it's sometimes it just doesn't even work out in the first place, you know? Yeah, there's a difference between having a brand identity and getting into NFTs. You're just basically a nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people told me, okay, you have 10K followers, you will get a lot of sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that these 10K followers are actually collectors. Yeah, exactly. It, it's Your brand almost resets when you join a different industry. Like, it doesn't even mm -hmm. just have to be NFTs, but like any community... You can't really just expect your entire community in your brand to just carry over instantly. A lot of the times you just got to start from square one. I mean, I've seen NFT collect or uh, artists and collectors too, who like have 200 followers and they're like making top sales, you know, because they just started in the industry mm. and they're making those connections as like, I'm building my brand right now, you know? So uh, mm. really, really important to keep in mind and... I kind of wish I did the same thing too when I got into NFTs was like just spend a little bit more time to like <laughs> relax and figure stuff out, you know, slowly, right? As fast as everything moves. Anyone in the chat or anyone watching this, if you haven't gotten in, in NFTs, don't feel pressed to list artwork and sell like as soon as you jump in, like take your time. I think a lot of us can agree with that advice right yeah but, and don't mint every single artwork you have yeah don't mint every, yeah <laughs> it doesn't look good. yeah actually explain that a little bit because i've seen you tweet that out before that artists shouldn't mint every they shouldn't sell every single artwork that they make why is that well basically i've seen that among designers mostly mm -hmm. um i mean i can understand that you might be hyped about the nft community you you want to make money but if you just start to make art or like if you just join the community and make artworks, artworks just because you want to sell them, it might give those collectors like the perception that you just want to make money. Mm -hmm. You can also just make art without having to sell it, sell it basically. 
you can also make personal work like next to your client work you can make personal work and you can improve it doesn't have to be like client work so it's basically like it's, it's the same basically yeah yeah and i guess to add to that too like if you're an artist and you think of yourself as a business right like the art you're creating is going into the market like if you look at any market one of the biggest things to pay attention to is supply and demand and if you're minting every single piece and you're coming out with new uh, nft like new art every single day the supply is going to be so big mm. that the demand is not going to be able to keep up with it which will devalue your work and it's like oh yeah everybody has you know 11s one in, in 10,000 she minted 10,000 pieces like yeah everyone has one you know like it, it's not as valuable <laughs> because of that right so um hmm. something to keep in mind too just keeping track of the market right also kind of paying attention to the market and the nft scene in general looking into the future and this is one of the last questions i have for you is looking into the future what are your short-term and long-term plans just moving forward in general um so basically i want to move out first mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean i met my like goal like 20k i'm able to move out but i still have to wait a little bit um <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, um also i want to be able to go to university study design or like maybe design Mm -hmm. but i want to just study design also one of my short-term goals was actually to be interviewed so i guess today i reached that goal Let's go we checked <laughs> one off the list congratulations um, <laughs> awesome. um <laughs> long term well i would say making a living out of art mm -hmm. being able to have like maybe art as like a main source of income and opening a shop i want to um sell more than just prints maybe like clothing or like keychain stickers like i want to experiment experiment mm -hmm. a little bit also one of my goals is or always has been is like improving the community at first it was the design community but now it's the nft community i'm not that speaking figure like you are but i think that i can help people by tweeting out my opinion i guess and Perfect. just oh well invest in other artists like smaller artists um yeah this is like one of my goals i i love that goal i mean i think you know as well that that's one of my goals is building out the creative scene and there's so many ways you can do that you know whether you're creating content or like you said investing in other artists like helping them start their career you know just spreading positivity like you said, maybe just posting tweets, helping people out. Like there's so many ways you can just build the community. And right now, the NFT scene specifically is very new. There's a lot of building to be done, right? There's not a lot that's been been done mm. yet. So uh, I love that as a goal. I think that that will, if you pursue that, it's going to work out very well for you. So good luck with that. And I'm glad we checked off your uh, get interviewed short term goal as well. <laughs> So let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in that case, <laughs> I have one more kind of side question for you. And that's just, do you have anyone that you want to shout out before we wrap up and go into the Q&A? Well, I already gave Loopify a shout out. Okay. Um, well, basically, I don't really have anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. I would probably shout out my flat art believers in my chat. Um, I go. know that a lot of 2D artists are getting like demotivated because it might seem like 3D artists are getting more recognition, mm. but we will change that. Or like, I will try to help change that. And yeah. Perfect. All right, shout out 2D art. Hey, I'm in the same boat with you. 2D animation, let's go. Shout out to you guys <laughs> if you do that. We're gonna make it happen. Yo! But all right, so <laughs> for YouTube, anyone watching on YouTube, we're cutting to a Q&A now. If you want to hop in one of these streams, I'm live on Twitch every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And when we do interviews, we'll have a section where we do questions. But for YouTube, this is all you're going to get. So I will see you next week. And for Twitch, we can start the Q&A. So if you have any questions, <laughs> let me know. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, I will see you in the next one. <laughs>